Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're going to talk about the day before. Or what now is really the day after. A few days after, actually. So far, it hasn't been good. So, what is it? Four, five, maybe six days after release, the day before is out. It's the day after. It's a few days after. And yet again, we find ourselves in a position where a game, a game company that has made promise after promise, set expectation after expectation, has been met with complete, utter, and royal failure and at this particular point in time has actually shut down the studio. Probably won't be making any more updates to the game. Probably won't be bringing anyone in to make any more updates to the game. Now, I haven't played the game. I have no interest in playing the game. I never really did have any interest in playing the game. And the primary reason is because one, I'm just personally not the biggest fan of zombie survival shooters, but two, and more importantly, I knew the game wasn't going to amount to anything. And coming from me, who am I, that doesn't really mean much to anybody else. But this is where I'm coming from. Time after time after time, we've been given promise after promise from a game studio, a game company that no one has ever heard of, that has no track record, no history of releasing games at scale to the masses. Large open worlds with sprawling character trees and endless boundless things to do in game. And yet they come along year after year and continue to take people's money that continue year after year to invest in them only to follow the same path that the day before has followed releasing an inferior subpar product having to release a statement about that inferior subpar product and takes off never to be seen or heard from again now again i haven't played the game there are plenty of people out there right now who have thorough, detailed walkthroughs, playthroughs of the game. Could break down plenty more than I'm going to break down in this video about the game. What's good about it, bad about it, etc. My main focus of this video was to talk about what I believe to be a, if not the fraudulent state of the gaming industry where it is now, the people that are coming into the space that are creating for all intent and purpose, a realm of fraudulent practice. Fantastic has released on their Twitter here a few tweets. One, it looks like was 48 hours ago, their official statement. Everyone has probably seen this by now. The day before has failed financially. We lack funds, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The game didn't meet your expectations on and on and on. And then another one updates. Sorry for the fact that today we will work with Steam to open up refunds. And the latest in that little chain to anyone who asks for a refund, we are currently working with Steam to allow refunds. Fantastic received zero dollars and will receive nothing from the day before sales. Uh, now that personally, I don't believe, I don't believe that at all. Uh, the company, the company Fantastic itself, you know, the creator of the game, the entity that is Fantastic, may not have received any money um, but you better believe that the people that were directing this game that were in charge of this game from the beginning have received some money uh, that is for certain now they were 
uh, using the help, the aid of a lot of volunteer developers, people who weren't being paid to help develop the game. But nevertheless, I do not believe at all that the most wish-listed game on Steam uh, just profited all the money they profited, and not a single person from this studio took any of that money. I don't believe that at all. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not. They claim that all the money is going back to the investors. They claim the money that it is going back to the shareholders, on and on and on. All this different stuff that they'd ha they've had to pay for over time. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not true. The point is, is that these people here, fantastic, are the epitome of the fraudulent practices that occur in the gaming space. You've got several key players in the gaming space in 2023 going into 2024. Everyone knows them. You've got Bethesda and Blizzard and EA and Activision, Ubisoft sledgehammer infinity ward dice a lot of really big well-known studios right with sister studios subsidiaries spread out all over the world they have a track record of producing content at a triple a level and giving that to you it may not always be what you want it may not always be perfect but they have a track record of doing it they're well established and well known for doing it so what Again, this video is about and where, why I wanted to make the video and where my opinion falls in the video is why these types of companies, fantastic, that no one's ever heard of or realistically speaking, I know they have a tweet here uh, stating that they released a few games. I've never heard of any of these games starting in the year 2017. Okay, sure. I've never heard of any of those games. 99% of the population has probably never heard of those games or even played them. I don't understand why studios like this can come along and present something that we've seen a hundred times before and somehow manage to convince the gaming populace that what they're claiming they're going to be able to provide is something they're actually capable of doing when we've seen it time and time and time again they are not capable of doing it on one hand it makes me upset angry because it's fraud plain and simple they're claiming that they're going to deliver a product at a certain quality a certain spec level they're taking people's money on that promise, and then as soon as the game releases, four days after the game releases, they release a statement claiming that this, the studio is shutting down, that all that money now that's in escrow or floating around or wherever it is is just up in the air, followed by some subsequent tweets here about how they're going to open up refunds and that they didn't receive any of that money it's it's fraud man it's fraud plain and simple now i'm not i'm not like a legal expert or anything i'm, I'm not gonna sit here and try to state that legally if it were to go to court it would actually be carried out as fraud but in my opinion man these people should be getting sued in my opinion they should be banned from ever being able to release another game on any major marketplace and they should be getting sued for false advertising, misleading of whatever, and fraud. They took thousands of people's money, tens of thousands of people's money, un there's no telling how many investors money, with the promise that they were going to do something they knew they were not going to be able to do. How are you taking all of this money from all of these investors that you apparently owe because you didn't receive any money from any of this? How are you taking all of that money from these investors, from the sales of the game, and you're not able to hire devs to develop the game? You're using volunteer devs to develop the game. You're using volunteer artists to develop the game. So where did the money go? What is the money being used for? That's why I don't believe this. The company itself as an entity may not have received any money, but the people who run this 
absolutely did not walk away empty-handed. Anyway, that's just me. That's just my thought. That's just my personal opinion. I can't prove any of it. They're just claims. I have no idea. The problem is, though, and I know I've said this a couple times in the video. I'm trying not to be repetitive. The problem is, is this is what's turning the gaming industry into scum. This is what's turning the gaming industry into a place of filth, of fraudulent practice, of misleading, false advertising, high hope, low delivery scum. Rockstar Games, Bethesda, Naughty Dog maybe, are a few of the studios that come to mind that we know by a proven track record, Blizzard can deliver an experience online that actually does cater to the open world, almost infinite trees of options, be who you want to be, do what you want to do type of game. These are studios that spend hundreds of millions of dollars and develop anywhere between five and ten years. Why do people keep spending money on these games? Now, don't get me wrong. We're looking at the game right here on the screen. It's playing in the background. It's not that bad looking of a game. I'll admit that. I'll give it that. This right here, to me, looks exactly like Starfield. If you were to show me a clip of this, knowing that Starfield has just released, I would have probably guessed that's what this is from. That's what it looks like. The game doesn't necessarily lack bones. It doesn't necessarily lack a foundation. It just lacks everything else that they promised it would offer. It doesn't have anything more to it. Again, I didn't play the game. If you want to see an in-depth review of someone who has, there's plenty of videos out there. My conversation is, why does this keep happening? Why do we keep allowing it to happen? What is the mentality behind people who are investing in these projects knowing that time after time after time they do not ever come to fruition to go back to a previous statement a part of it makes me angry for all of the reasons that i just listed on the other hand though it kind of just makes me sad and the reason it makes me sad is because to me it signifies just how much people want something new just how much people want something different just how much people want to see something from someone that they haven't seen before. And a part of that is probably just a little bit of consumerism. But another part of it is probably that for so long, a few companies have really kind of dominated the space. And because of the early access industry taking off or the early access side of the industry taking off like it did, the quality of gaming really went way downhill. So it's just kind of sad, man. I think a lot of people invest in these types of things because they genuinely do believe that there might be someone out there who's capable of bringing to the forefront something that they haven't seen before, something that they want to play, something that they may not have gotten elsewhere in the industry. And yet again, they're let down. And not only are they let down, they're robbed. They're stolen from. Maybe they'll get their money back. Maybe they won't. So you don't really have a choice but to be angry about it. But also to feel just sort of sad about it. Now, we've had the IGN video playing in the background for the majority of this. And I'm going on about 15 minutes long. I had no intention of making this video a 20, 30, 40 minute long rant. The video again is simply about the fraudulent practices that seem to be occurring in the industry, specifically related to companies that come along, they release their game early, early access, pre-alpha, beta, whatever you want to call it, with no track record, with no name behind it, nothing really behind it to give any sort of inkling that they might may actually be able to follow through. And for whatever reason, we keep investing in them. We keep giving them our money. 
we keep allowing them to take our money and run without delivering the product that they said they were going to deliver. This video, if anything, I suppose is a call to action for gamers out there to stop doing this. I understand where you're coming from when you want a new game, when you want a game that's a little bit different, when you want a game that's from somebody that you haven't seen develop every other game. I get it. But there's a reason that these developers are able to do that while this type of developer isn't. It's because it takes time. It's because it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of people all working toward the same goal. Not a studio like Fantastic that's made up of 10, 15 people. I don't know. Half of them are volunteers. They're not being paid. Everyone who saw the original gameplay trailer should have known right away that this is not, it's just not going to happen. The trailer was filled with high tech, beautiful lighting, screen space reflections, DLSS, the whole nine yards, highly rendered, pre-rendered, edited. The same thing that we see from every early access, soon to come, revolutionary, genre defining game. And yet again, we're given something, I'll admit, in this case, that actually had a few bones, but fell far from the mark of what they promised, what it promised it would deliver, and yet they still made off with everyone's money, shut down as a studio, four days after it released. If that's not fraud, I don't know what is. If that's not for lack of a better word, malpractice, false advertising. I don't know what is, how it's not illegal and doesn't justify legal action. I don't know. Again, they should give back every dime paid out to them by the people who pre-ordered this game. They should be banned from ever being able to put a game out on any public platform again. Granted, the studio doesn't exist anymore, so that probably won't happen. To wrap things up though, if you've made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you. I'd like to know your thoughts on this type of thing happening in the industry, this type of pre-release game, promise of grandeur to inevitable failure. I'd like to know what you think should be done to people who do this kind of thing and get away with it. I'd like to know how you think we can avoid it what it is about people what it is about the state of gaming that continues to push people to invest in these types of things rather than just wait and see what happens it's not the people's job to fund a gaming studio it's not the people's job to fund a publisher it's the studios di directors directors of finance directors of operations it's their job to fund their game. It's not your job. So stop doing it. Anyway, thank you again for watching if you made it to the end of the video. Hopefully, this being as big as it is, this getting the coverage that it's gotten, being the most wishlisted or at least one of the most wishlisted games on Steam, hopefully this ignites a spark set something off in the underbelly, underbelly of the gaming industry. And even within the publishing platform, Steam, Epic Games, Battle.net, all of these guys tightening down on allowing this type of thing onto their platform. I hope to see it change. I hope to see the gamer, the consumer change their habit, change their way of thinking about it, change how they approach it and stop giving these companies their money. That's not your job. Your job is to play the game. It's not to fund the company. That's their job. And if they can't do that successfully, they're probably not going to successfully release a game either. Anyway, it's out. It's done. It was the day before and now it's the day after. Hopefully, anyone who did buy the game gets their money back. Hopefully the industry shifts away from this type of practice. I've said it before, said it again, and I'll keep saying it. Early access gaming ruined the gaming industry. It ruined it. It destroyed it. 
that allowed publishers and developers to get away with releasing subpar products that they never finished, make hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, and take off. See ya. Bye-bye. I don't know why we do it. I don't get it. Nevertheless, another lesson learned. I doubt it'll be the last time. I hate to see it, but I never played the game. I have no intention of playing the game. I never wanted to play the game because from the beginning, it was nothing more than an over the top, highly edited, pre-rendered, shiny thing sitting in the corner that at least I felt like in my gut I knew was never going to amount to anything. And well, it didn't. I make a lot of different types of videos on the channel, guys and gals. I live stream from time to time when I have the time. If you feel like subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. It's a small channel. I'm doing what I can to grow. If you feel like liking the video, that'd be even better. YouTube loves that. If you don't want to subscribe, don't. If you enjoyed the video, maybe give it a like. Like I said, the algorithm loves it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please stop aiding and abetting these types of fraudulent practices in the gaming industry. If there's a game that you see that you're invested in, that you want to play, that you believe in, then that's fine. Promote it on social media, share their dev logs. Do not give them money. That's not your job. That's the studio's job. It's not yours. Appreciate you guys watching. You have a good night. I'll see you in the next video.